Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Last episode we got our welder set up and found that we actually have welding goggles. So we don't have to worry about that. We can start vehicle work right now if that's something we were interested in. Now, we did have our eyes on the Humvee and the Humvee is going to require a bottle jack. Now we do have recipes, or not bottle jack, a jack of some sort. We do have recipes for that. And now that we have the forge, we have the ability to make them. Now there's also one that requires the... Um, welder actually oh, does this not require a welder this doesn't that's really interesting i thought all the jacks required either a welder or a forge uh it is only a jacking quality of three again it's about a thousand pounds per jacking quality so if we were doing a humvee for example i imagine that's more than 3306 pounds looks like it's 1102 pounds per jacking quality that's interesting does that math hold up for jacking 4,409? Roughly, roughly about that. Okay, we would want the bottle jack. It's the biggest jack. Uh, it does require the forge. Scissor jack requires the welder. Either one would be fine for the Humvee, but if we're going to make one, we might as well make the biggest one. Um, we have all that, all those tools. No, we never made a swage and die set. Didn't that require something special that we didn't have? Swage and die. It requires two sets of tongs. That's weird. Uh, didn't know that. But no, everything else we have. So the bottle jack. We just need swage and die set and then more metal. So let's make a swage and die set really quick. Uh, shouldn't take too, too long. Oh no, we need more tongs. Yeah, so one tongs. It's counting the same pair of tongs for both. That's odd. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, but that's fine. It's weird that it's well made for combat, considering it's a swage and die set. It's literally just like a metal chunk, more or less, metal cube. Uh, let's uh, make this quickly. Again, the crafting spot will help us do that, uh, having the, the desk there. Got sick at the end of the last episode, want to apologize again really is just what it is. I can't help that. I could have, you know, gone and gotten sick and come back and continued the episode, but like, it's fine. We had already talked about more or less what we wanted to talk about. I kind of like shorter videos for this. I'm not liking how much right now we're getting into the let's play aspect where it's a little bit less tutorial and a little bit more just playing the game. I don't like that. I don't think that that's really helpful because we talk about little tidbits of knowledge in every episode but I think that most people aren't going to watch every single episode, so it's like kind of hit and miss with whether they find the right tip or not. Anyway, let's make the bottle jack. Uh, we don't have the recipe. Yeah, we have to f take the book with us. Again, uh, in a book, if you don't have the recipe, let's, uh, what, what, what book is it in? Bottle jack is in under the hood. We'll grab that. Um, if you don't haven't memorized the recipe, you need to have the book nearby in order to craft with it. So we were here, and we could not get access to the book which was here, so we just brought it outside with us. So now we have that recipe available. Make the bottle jack. It's going to take a while. Five hours. My God. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get this jack and we'll begin working on our Humvee. It is day 70 at this point. We've been playing for nine days uh, or so. We have made a lot of progress. We have a forge. We have a welder. Again, these things really open up our future um, for, for upgrading our equipment. We should look as well at armor since we're upset with our the heat that the fur trench coat is giving us. We should really look at replacing that. Now, normally... Once we get towards the mid game, I tend to, on my torso, wear Kevlar vests. They're excellent. They have a very low encumbrance. Now, admittedly, they are the, the vests. They don't cover your arms or anything, um, but they're quite good for torso armor. So I really like the Kevlar vests. There are ESAPI vests, I believe, is how that is what that stands for, is E S A P I, I think, um, which is a uh, very, very powerful vest that's pretty common on soldier zombies now i do not wear this vest because i believe that you know we we talked about um kind of me having issues with the the mailman spawn similarly i have a lot of issues with the e e sappy vest because i think it's um just ridiculously powerful i think whoever made it didn't really put a lot of thought into the balance of the game and so i don't wear it because of that i find it to be 
it's just too much. It's too powerful. But hey, if you're new uh, and you're kind of learning the game, go ahead. Use the Sappy Vest. It's probably the best torso uh, protection in the game short of power armor, uh, which is why it's ridiculous because it's on every soldier zombie and it's very, very common. Um, and it's basically rivals power armor, even though power armor is super rare and hard to find. Um, and it's just, it's just uh, silly that it's so available. We need to change the tires on the Humvee, so we need tires. Well, it's one in the afternoon. We're tired. I don't really want to go to bed yet. Do we want to work on the vehicle? I thought we would explore some. Let's let's go take a look at this vehicle. No, let's look at armor and stuff. Well, let's just spend a little time here at the base. Let's look at any armor we could do. Since we haven't found a Kevlar vest, let's see what we can make on our torso. Uh, we can make, is this, no, I want the leather, can we make the leather trench coat? Because the leather trench coat would be better protection than the fur trench coat, and it would also be less hot, uh, although not, uh, not super cool or anything. What am I looking for? Just type trench coat. We could make another faux fur trench coat. Oh, it's the sleeve, it's so basically... It's a sleeveless version of the faux fur trench coat. All we would be doing is taking the trench coat, ripping the sleeves off of. This would reduce, it wouldn't cover the arms anymore, and it would slightly reduce the warmth, uh, which is not amazing. We're looking for an actual leather trench coat. We apparently don't have the skills or the recipe for it, so it doesn't look like that's an option. In fact, it looks like we don't have any real torso armor. We can make the armored leather jacket pretty easily, I think but it's very encumbering, which I don't really like. I actually don't like any of these things that I'm seeing. So it looks like, I mean, we can make a cuirass, but I don't think that that's, uh, it's not, it's not, we don't have anything good. I don't like any of these items. Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Let's try looking at our books. We should have chitin, right? We have no chitin armor that we can make. Okay, so armor is not really going to work. We really need to replace our trench coat with something else. It's just too warm. Uh, the motorcycle pants are warm as well, but they're tolerable because of their um, decent protection. It's going to be hard to find something better than that right now. We can drop these things and leave them here. So let's grab... We don't need the welder either. Uh, let's grab a wrench which we will need to remove the tires. Let's grab our jack, which we will need to remove the tires. Apparently we had a jack that we picked up somewhere, but we'll take the big jack. I don't know how heavy the vehicle is, but, and I think all it needed was tires, right? So all we should need is a jack and a wrench. We'll take, no, we won't. We don't need the hacksaw for anything. Uh, we wielding the spear. We are. We could probably dump the nail bat at this point because we're not using flimsy weapons anymore. So there's really no reason for us to carry this backup weapon. Plus, it's getting damaged. Yep. And we'll head up there and we'll see if we can find some tires for this Humvee. So we'll do a little bit of vehicle work. Uh, we should really do an episode on vehicle work in general um, and harvesting parts and installing parts. We could do that, although that will be, we're at nine minutes. It'll probably be a long one. Okay, so this is the vehicle menu. We've seen this already when we talked about quick vehicle assessment, um, and we know what to look for to determine whether this vehicle is drivable or not, which is great. That's very important things to know. It's one of the things I struggled with the most when I was first learning was how to tell if a vehicle worked, because I would look at it and be like, oh, it totally works, and then you try to drive it and you're like, oh, never mind, it didn't have wheels. How did I not know that? Um, and it gets a little frustrating, but there's a lot more to this menu than just at a glance. Again, on the left-hand side, we see the visual representation of the vehicle. We can move using the, uh, same, move the same keys you use for movement, arrow keys or numpad or whatever. Um, and we can highlight various locations on the vehicle. Now the vehicle will always be oriented to the north. So the front of the vehicle, as far as I know, is always at the top, and the rear of the vehicle is always at the bottom, and then left and right as well. 
So every time we hover over a tile, we get this information here. This displays a complete list of all parts that are installed on that tile. So here, there's just a frame and a windshield. Now the way vehicles work in Cataclysm is that everything is based on a frame or 90% of things are based on a frame. So in order to install most things, you need to have a frame on the tile first. So the rear of this vehicle, if we wanted to extend this back and add more like cargo containers, we would start by installing uh, a frame here, then building on top of that until we build out the entirety of the rear of this vehicle. Um, and then we would be able to install additional parts on top of those frames. Now, this is not always the case. Again, I said like 90%. For instance, this vehicle has a, uh, oh no, it doesn't have a RAM. But if you're trying to install a RAM, you would go uh, beyond a frame. In fact, we can see a list of parts here that would be installed um, even though there's no frame here. So we could install rams, uh, frames, looks like handles. I'm not sure what a handle is, I guess, for dragging the vehicle. Um, we can install external tanks because they would not be internal, so they wouldn't need a frame. They wouldn't be part of the vehicle. We can install like a crane on the front of the vehicle, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, most parts cannot be installed without a frame. So if we go, we don't have any open tiles here. Uh, because everything has something on it. But if we had a tile that was just a frame, I could open a big list that would show you just the dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of parts that can be installed there. So everything, every one of these tiles that we're seeing here has a frame at the core, which is why it's listed at the top. It's the most crucial component. If the frame gets destroyed, everything on that tile gets destroyed. Uh, that's not true. If it gets destroyed and there's no other attachment to the vehicle like let's say we have a um like a tail on our vehicle where it's just three frames stuck out here and at the back we have like a a, um, a crane or something if one of the interior frames got destroyed these were no longer connected to the vehicle they would be completely destroyed as well um there was a while ago they were indestructible so people would build these really wonky um, like exterior walls with frames that were not attached in any other way. But I believe that that was changed so that now everything will be instantly destroyed if it's no longer connected to the vehicle. I believe to circumvent that exploit. I don't know if that's actually 100% correct or not. But anyway, um, so here we have the visual representation of the vehicle. On the right hand side, we have descriptions of the vehicle parts that are on that tile. Problem is, if you go to where there's like a lot of things, it says more parts here. I don't, uh, we, we can scroll this, uh, but most of the time you're looking to quickly at a glance see something. I very rarely scroll through this, uh, but you can do so using the greater than and less than symbols to toggle to multiple pages if there's more than however many parts. Again, I use um, very large text size because I'm trying to uh, make things readable for cat for uh, YouTube and for people on mobile. So your text will probably be smaller and more things will fit in this list. But for me, it's only two or th you know three or four items. Um, but here you can see a description of the vehicle parts that are here. At the top of the screen, we have a list of multiple options available to us. At the bottom of the screen, we have a kind of at a glance information page. At the center of the screen, it's also at a glance information. So here we see engines, tanks, batteries, turrets and seats. Is there anything else that goes on this list? I don't think there is. I think that's all the categories that will appear in this central column. At the bottom, we have at a glance information. You'll see the safe slash top speed is 10 to 15 miles per hour. I believe this is because our wheels are broken. That will change. Average acceleration, the current mass of the vehicle, you'll see this would have been too big for us to use any of these smaller jacks on. Uh, so it's good that we made the big jack. The cargo capacity of the vehicle, this includes everything. So even like seats that can have a small amount of storage contribute to this value. Um, status, this just shows you if your vehicle is in good condition or not. Most of the time it will be dented, damaged, something like that. Um, because it's very rare that you have 100% repaired parts at all times. Wheels, again, shows you whether you have enough wheels to drive. This shows you the most damaged component. Air drag, rolling drag, static drag, and off-road, I am not good with. I don't know what they, how they function, um, so I don't know the math behind them to explain that to you. Then here we have the, uh, our fuel level and our battery level. Additionally, if our vehicle is turned on, this will display how long it can run before it runs out of battery. So if we go ahead and, uh, go ahead and start this engine, fails to start. Start the engine. Okay, engine is started. You'll see it's now displaying how much time we have. 
um, until this is uh, fully charged. And then this will say, uh, I guess it's not saying because it's just idling. Let's wait a few turns. There we go. Uh, oh no, it's broken. Okay, I don't know why it's displaying that way. But anyway, it will normally display how long you can run the engine until it goes empty. Obviously, this is not going to run for a week. That is incorrect. Um, I'm not sure why that's that's messed up. So let's turn this off. We're at 4% fuel. We do need more diesel if we're going to be using this vehicle at length, but we'll address that in another episode. Uh, so let's talk about the top of the screen. We have the ability to install. So if we hit I, uh, you will first select the tile you, where you want to install something. So let's say we want to put a RAM on our vehicle. We'll come to the front here. We'll hit I. It will open up a list of all available parts for this tile. Um, it will highlight if it's grayed out, it means it's not currently installable because we're missing components. If it is white, it is installable and white things will be listed at the top of the list. So if we're trying to install a RAM and we only have uh, certain, like let's say we brought chitin materials, uh, at the top of this list will be the chitin RAM because we'll have the ability to, to do that. Um, after that, it's not in any particular order. Really, I'm not sure how it's ordered. There's no way to sort this. Um, by alphabetical order but what we can do is sort by uh, component type so i don't know these c is cargo how do i tab yeah c is cargo l is light u is utility h is hull i is internal o is other and f is filter uh, so you can search as well using the forward slash so we're looking for the chitin frame here we we could just quickly search for that um, same way we can search anything else if something that you're trying to install is not in this list, let's say I'm trying to install cargo space. We search for cargo and we don't see cargo space. Well, that's weird. Uh, maybe space, oh look, there's nothing there. If it's not in a list, it means it cannot be installed on that tile. I hear this question all the time on Discord. Someone's like, hey, I'm trying to install insert part uh, and it's not in a list. Well, that means you can't install it there. Well, why? There's nothing there. Well, 90% of the time someone's like, Oh, oh wait, there's an aisle there. Aisles take up space, so you can install a cargo space on an aisle, obviously. Um, so people often have that question. If it's not listed in a list, it means it cannot currently be installed on that particular tile. You have to find a different tile. Um, and certain things have certain tile requirements. Like we said, um, external tanks need to be on the exterior, rams need to be on the front, etc. Um, most things will be installed in a vehicle and most things require at least a frame. Uh, most things require there really to be nothing else there. Room, roofs do not conflict, so we could build a trunk with a roof uh, because the roof goes on the top layer. There are multiple layers when you build a vehicle and things occupy a certain layer and will conflict with other things on that layer. I'm not 100% how many layers there are or how to really explain that. I think that's on the wiki, but the wiki is generally outdated, so I can't really recommend that. Um, but just think about it logically. You know, Obviously, if you're building a roof, um, and you want like you want to install I, I mean I can't think of a good example of something that would conflict with a roof really but hey you're trying to install a trunk and you want to install a seat well obviously you can't put a seat on it and a trunk together they occupy the same layer uh, and the same space so you can't put them together so if it's not in the list that's why next we have the R key which is for repair this will um, if you're not selecting anything it will jump you to a tile that requires repair. So sometimes if you're trying to repair your vehicle um, and you're just trying to repair all parts, it's easy to just jump off, press R, and it will jump to a tile that needs repair. And then you can go over here and press R and it'll jump to the next tile. You know, you'll repair everything, jump to the next tile, etc. Um, and then once you're on a tile that has a repairable item, if we hit R, it will pop up which thing you want to uh, repair and it will tell you what is required to make that repair. So for instance, we have a damaged wheel. It's fully destroyed. So in order to re uh, repair this wheel, we actually need an entirely new wheel, which we're not going to be able to find an armored wheel probably in this town. Um, so, but there are multiple ways to deal with things. Like let's say we were trying to repair this wheel. Well, we can't actually repair it, but we can remove the wheel entirely and just put on a new tire um, manually instead of repairing, which would require this specific wheel. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, repair is pretty straightforward. 90% of things, well, a lot of things on the vehicle are going to require a welder to repair. Um, electronics items like, let's say we want to repair our dashboard. This will require a glue component or tape component. 
Um, so there are some things that require welding, some things require glue. Uh, glue's not super common, but duct tape is very common these days, so I would go with duct tape. Next, we have the mend function. This is specifically, as far as I know, only functions for engines. So if you have a faulty engine, which we've seen in a previous playthrough, you would use mend to fix the faultiness of it. It's not the same as repairing it. Remember, repair is item health. So if we try to repair the engine, we're gonna, it would be a welder and it would bring up the health of this item. If we mend it, it would fix a fault in the engine, which is the parentheses that say faulty in them. So two different things. Mending will require specialized components depending on what is wrong with the engine. Next, we have the F command to fill. This is how you would fill a tank. So if we had uh, diesel in our inventory, we would hit F. It would prompt us on what we want to refill. Uh, and we don't actually have any diesel on us, so we can't refill it. Pretty straightforward. O is the key used to remove items from this list so let's say that's what we were doing when we were harvesting frames let's say we want to remove this board we hit o we go to the board it will display what is required for removing that particular component and we would hit enter and it would be removed and that of course takes time uh siphon lets us siphon from a tank so if we wanted to pull diesel out of this vehicle we would hit the s key but we need a hose and a container in order to siphon fuel so we can't do that at the moment Unload, I believe, functions the same as siphon, except instead of putting it into a container. Actually, I don't know. No, unload would be for turrets and things to remove their ammunition. So if we go to, there's a turret in here somewhere. The mounted M240, and we hit D. Oh, solid fuel. Oh. How, how do I unload the gun then? That's interesting. Hmm. I don't know how you fill or remove ammo from turrets. That's weird. I thought D was to remove ammunition. Apparently, it's to remove solid fuel. Um, the only solid fuel I can think of is plutonium um, for, from like a mini reactor. But I'm pretty sure once you put it in a mini reactor, you can't remove it. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what D does. Apparently, crew uh, apparently would be an NPC thing. I guess we would assign them a location uh, to a seat, which I've never used before. E lets us rename the vehicle, not a big deal. Um, a is to label. I never label anything. I don't know why you would label anything. And then escape to exit this menu. So that's pretty much it. What have we not talked about with vehicles? What's important to know about vehicles that we haven't talked about? I don't really know how turrets work, so don't, don't ask me questions about turrets. I never use them. Um... Other important things. Uh, okay, so I don't know if we talked about this in our at a glance video or not. If one of your items has a red asterisk, it means that this is a leaky part. Um, there go my dogs. Uh, so if we have a car battery that has an asterisk here, it means it's leaking battery charge. You can fix this, I think, by just repairing the item, but it's possible that it would remain leaky. I think repairing does fix leaks though. So, um, or you would have to alternatively remove the tank entirely and replace it. Uh, or battery entirely. Uh, leaks can apply to either tanks or batteries. When you drive with a leaky tank, there will be fuel left behind your vehicle, so it should be something you'll notice pretty quickly. But uh, battery charges, keep an eye out for that asterisk. You don't want to lose battery charge. If you have multiple batteries in a vehicle and one of them is leaking, they will never charge to full because you will always be losing a little bit of charge. Um, or was that changed as well? Either way, leaky is bad. You don't want leaky things in your vehicle. What else do we need to know about vehicles? Um, at a certain point, again, jacking becomes an issue. Once you weigh down, like if you make an enormous vehicle, some people make really spectacular vehicles. The jacks will no longer work. You'll need an air jack, which I think is a very special item that we've never um, seen. Or I don't think I've ever seen one in all the time I've been playing. It's a very special item that uh, basically gives you unlimited jacking. So... Uh, no matter the weight of your vehicle, you could make repairs. Obviously, if your vehicle gets very, very heavy, you would not be able to change the wheels and things. You would have to, I guess if you don't have the right jacking, you'd have to take parts off of it until it was underweight and then be able to jack it up to take the wheels off. Um, again, jacking is required. Um, other pointers, uh, vehicles require hubs. You'll see we have a heavy wheel hub assembly. 
the tires um, are it's it's just like your vehicle in real life. You have a tire that is bolted to the hub of your vehicle. Um, well, there's a there's a wheel hub in in your vehicle. Um, that's what determines if something is steerable or not. In general, you want your front wheels to be steerable. So if we come here um, to the front of the vehicle, you'll see that this is a hub assembly that is steerable. This allows this vehicle to turn um, as it turns its wheels. Um, some people ask what happens if you put four steerable wheels on your vehicle. I have no idea. I would not recommend it because that's not really how vehicles work um, in the real world. So I generally would recommend you just have steerable wheels on the front. Um, so you do need a hub to function with wheels. So if you're trying to install wheels and you can't figure out why you can't, it's probably because you don't have hubs. Similarly, dashboards are used for electronics. So if we don't have a dashboard, we cannot turn on our headlights. So if you install headlights and you're like, I can't install, I can't, I can't uh, turn on my headlights. Why? Uh, you need a dashboard. Controls are required to, to control the vehicle. Seats are required also for controlling the vehicle. You need a seat and controls. Um, the clock, the, there's, there's other components that I never really pay attention to. Horns I never use. Clocks I never use. If you remove a clock, I think it gives you a watch because there's no um, clock component. So if you pulled that out, it would give you a watch. So if you're looking for a watch. Um, security systems, as we discussed, will uh, blare alarms if you try to hotwire it which can be an issue. You can remove them, but it requires a decent electronic skill. Someone told me that you could uh, use this menu to do something with the security system, but I don't know how that works or what it would be. Uh, generally, the driving menu, which is the carrot key, the shift six key, will have all the functionality. If you're in the vehicle, it will auto start the vehicle. Um, but if you are outside of that seat and you hit it, but you're adjacent to it, it will give you all the options available to this vehicle. So like if we were just trying to recharge batteries, we would obviously not want to run the vehicle. We would just turn on the recharger um, to charge the vehicle because there's no reason to burn gas if we have a lot of battery charge. All we want to do is basically trade some of that electronic value um, into the battery. Um, so we wouldn't turn on the engine. This is also a way to adjust headlights. If you're driving, let's uh, start the vehicle. If you're driving and you hit the E key for examine, you can examine the vehicle, which will show you this menu, or you can go to control vehicle and it will give you that menu of all those things. So even if you're driving, you can still flip on your headlights, no problem. Um, with this vehicle, we're gonna wanna jack it up and change the, the tires. We have, uh, I think, four blown out tires. So we'll have to harvest four tires in the near future. Um, adding more tires does increase your your like some of this stuff like your your uh, basically your control over the vehicle um, and I think traction and whatnot. So like if you're off roading, more vehicles, more wheels help, I believe. Um, so and plus if you blow out some tires, like let's say we have six tires on this, like two up front steerable and then four in the rear for for just driving. If we blow a tire, we can still drive as long as we have that many wheels on it. So in general, it helps to have a few extra tires on your car. Anything else? Uh, worth noting, if you put a bed in a vehicle, you're not going to be able to sleep because quarter panels, you can see through quarter panels. Now, you, some doors are see-through, some doors are not. Some walls in the rear are see-through, some are not. Here we have boards. Boards are not transparent. Um, you'll see we can't see what's in the rear of this vehicle. It's a little bit more obvious if we go in here. You'll see we cannot see this area because it's blocking our sight, but we can still see out the rear of the vehicle because these doors are not opaque. Um, if you go to install, I mean, we're not going to be able to see. We don't have a tile where we could install a door. Um, could we? Yeah, we could install a door here, right? Door? Yeah. So if we look here, at the bottom, you'll see it says opaque, uh, or it won't say opaque. This is how you determine if a door is opaque or not um, for the purposes of blocking out light. Because if we come back here and we try to sleep in this chair, um, because you can sleep in chairs um, and seats and whatnot, we will wake up when it's daylight because there's so much daylight coming in from the vehicle. So that's something to keep in mind. God, anything else? I mean, there's so much to talk about with vehicles. Vehicles are essentially the utility in Cataclysm. Everything that you want, basically, can be installed in a vehicle. So, like, 
a lot of the tools like a forge, a welder, things like that can be installed in a vehicle. Um, instead of using fires, we can set up a stove in a vehicle. We can put a bed in a vehicle. We can add turrets to a vehicle. We can recharge batteries in a vehicle. We can use the vehicle as a weapon by hitting enemies. We can uh, install an autoclave in a vehicle. We can install, um, geez, I don't know, uh, lots of cargo space in our vehicle. We can set up additional seats for our companions. We can do a lot with vehicles that make them really crucial to, to the game. So as you get later and later in the game, you're going to expand your vehicle. You're going to work on a vehicle because it's so important to have all that utility. Yeah. So I think that's going to do it for now. So hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully this was a good uh, tutorial. And uh, I'll be back with more in the near future. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, maybe like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.